So verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run, right? Yeah. Run to and fro, where? Where do these eyes run to and fro? It's kind of a strange picture, right? His eyes running to and fro, where? Throughout, say throughout. Throughout, throughout the whole earth. So where are we talking about here? here? We're talking about here, right? You're on earth, I'm on earth, who else is on earth? The Holy Ghost is on earth. So the eyes of the Holy Ghost, now you've heard me say this before, I can't really reiterate everything, but I'll reiterate enough to make it poignant, right? The eyes of the Holy Ghost, because he's God in the earth today, who went to heaven to be with the Father and isn't returning until the end days. Who is it? No. Jesus did. And then they sent the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, right? Does the Holy Ghost have eyes? Uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh. He has ears, right? The Holy Ghost is a person, and he came into the earth, so he's in the earth, right? The eyes of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself. Himself who? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. He's going to show himself, right? But not only just show himself, he's going to show himself strong on behalf of who? those whose hearts are perfect towards him but first i want to get you to understand that the holy ghost is in the earth and his eyes are running to and fro so he's looking that's what that means he's looking at you because you're in the earth and so he's looking around i can't tell you how many times i've had this happen when i would worship the holy ghost which i'm going to be talking about in a little bit here isn't that amazing well, worshiping the holy ghost when i sense him come into my room and look at me are you here yes. does that weird you out yes less and less now but it used to I was like what are you looking at <laughs> well he's looking in the earth runs to, do I have scripture for this the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth where are you where are you in you're in the earth so he's looking around for someone whose heart is perfect towards him say perfect. perfect perfect towards him well i'm telling you today that worship is how you're perfect towards god he's god and when you worship him your heart is perfect towards him am i saying you shouldn't be confessing the word am i saying you shouldn't be doing the word and all these other things no of course not but if we want our hearts perfected or perfectly towards him have you ever worshiped god before what happens when you go i worship you god i worship you you aren't thinking about the dinner hopefully you aren't doing other things your heart is perfect towards him worship say worship, worship. worship. so if your heart is perfect towards him we're talking about worship so in worship which i spoke a little bit about last week the benefits of worship one of the things when you're worshiping god is that he's he's looking he comes and he looks at you and he sees someone whose heart is perfect towards him and then what does it say he's going to do he's going to show himself strong meaning he's going to do something they do something, do something. he's going to show himself strong on behalf could he show himself strong without doing something i'm going to show myself strong well lift that chair no i'm showing myself strong by just standing here and doing it. no he means he's gonna actively say actively actively, actively do something for you right. who's he gonna do it for the one whose heart is perfect the one who worships him right. and i'll probably make this statement later but there's things that he won't do for you if you don't worship him there's things he will do according to this verse of scripture if your heart's perfect towards him which means worshiping him that he'll do for you that he won't do for somebody who's not worshiping him him who him the holy ghost who's in the earth whose eyes are running looking around to see whose heart is perfect towards is your heart perfect towards him it is if you're worshiping him if you're not worshiping him then your heart's not perfect towards him you, you don't like that oh well, i'm sorry but it's true I'm telling you from the word and I'm telling you from experience that there's things when I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost that he does he literally gets up and does something for me that I couldn't do I don't even know what he's doing half the time 
he'll bear witness with my spirit i just did something for you and i'm like yeah what is it that's right hallelujah he's like you'll find out <laughs> but i know it's good right if god's doing so say god, god. Doing, doing something, something. For, me. for me is that good yes. you want him moving on your teacher you want him moving on your boss Amen. right you want him moving on clients you want him doing things for you right. you know if you don't want god doing something for you go go somewhere else because I want God doing something for me right. right well that wasn't very nice well sometimes the word doesn't seem very nice does it the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself have I made it clear enough who the himself is right. who's the himself in the earth the Holy Ghost he wants to show himself strong on behalf of who those whose heart is perfect to those who worship him are you here mm -hmm. and there is that moment when God gets up and moves on your behalf in the earth am I saying am I discounting confession here am I discounting those other things of course not you should have all those things am I discounting tithing of course not you do all of those things expecting the word but there's something about worshiping God that causes him to get up and go and do something for you that moment when God gets up and moves on your behalf say on my behalf is this good news Amen. I'm telling you you worship the Holy Ghost until that moment comes when he gets up and does something he moves on your behalf in the earth let's look at 2nd Chronicles because we're right there in 2nd Chronicles right 2nd Chronicles go to 26 and let's look at verse 5 is this one underlined like the one in 16 was yes, it is. is it <laughs> yeah that's right glory to god uh you should be like you know where you are right <clears throat> second chronicles 26 verse 5 and he sought god in the who do you seek god. god now have i told you that every time unless the bible is specifically enumerating that it's about the father or jesus then in our dispensation it is talking about the holy ghost who is god in the earth today right so and he sought God so we can apply this to the Holy Ghost in our day he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and as long as he sought the Lord what God made him to prosper the whole God made him to prosper is actually one word in the Hebrew and what it basically means is God did something for him as long as he sought the Lord and one way to seek the Lord is to worship the Lord and God did something as long as he did that or in the time frame that he was doing that God did something for him and the end result was what lack no it was it prospered him beyond what he could do you understand that God went out and did something for him all right glory to God now let's go to 2nd Corinthians New Testament what about in the New Testament brother all right let's go over to the New Testament 2nd Corinthians God doing things for you say God, God. the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost doing things, doing things for, me, for me on my behalf, on my behalf. right you yes. have a life you have situations you have things that you deal with wouldn't it be good to have God go do something on your behalf for your life it's okay for him to do something in my life I prefer that frankly <laughs> unless we're talking about you and then I want him to go into your life and do something are you here I'm not sure you are but we'll, we'll go along with this second Corinthians chapter 9 uh, chapter 9 and what verse six. all right verse 6 but this I say he would sow sparingly shall reap also sparingly he would sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully as every man according as he purposes in his heart so who's gonna be the one purposing to
to sow or to give and in this situation I'm not gonna I'm not this is specifically talking about money here but I'm not gonna talk about that I'm talking about giving worship to God you're sowing into him remember your heart is perfect towards him right every man according as he purposes in his heart who does the one the purposing in their heart whether they're gonna worship God or not you and, and I'm telling you on the other side of that the more you worship God the more he's going to be actively involved in doing things in your life right every man according as he purposes in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver not a grumpy one verse 8 and God is able to make God is able to make something for you God is able to do something for you making things happen for you that you couldn't happen before right and it says here God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work does that sound good yes Hallelujah. I dare say you couldn't do that on your own I dare say I couldn't do that on my own but when I have God doing things for me making things happen for me out beyond my influence yep. you have a scope of influence don't you mm -hmm. you can influence people around you you know your jobs or whatever you got some some kind of influence right mm -hmm. spank the kids of the household <laughs> once a day whether they need it or not or not but you have a realm of influence how about God the Holy Ghost in the earth when you worship him you give him the ability to make these things look at God is able which to me speaks of something here where God is not able to do those things he may want to but until you line yourself up and your heart is perfect towards him in worshiping him he's not able but you enable God to do it are you here I'm gonna read out of the Amplified just because it's so good I was gonna do it last week but then I forgot it <clears throat> is this any good so far 2nd Corinthians I mean if I was in church I'd want to hear this message verse 8 2nd uh, Corinthians 9 8 in the Amplified Bible and God is able to make all grace every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always under all circumstances whatever the need be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation he's able to make all grace every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance who does this God God the Holy Ghost who's in the earth whose eyes are looking for somebody whose hearts perfect towards him so he can show himself <coughs> say show himself show himself. show himself strong on behalf what is the strong he's gonna show he's gonna make all grace every favor say favor favor, favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance now favor you understand favor right means he's gonna do something for you that he wouldn't have done before if he didn't have his favor that's one of the biggest things when you worship the Holy Ghost is you get his favor it's one of the things he's looking for there are th some things that he just won't do for you unless you worship him you could see that in these verses of Scripture I just showed you if your heart isn't perfect towards him through worship then the, the fulfillment of that promise won't come to pass if your heart is perfect towards him through worship then what will come to pass him showing himself strong him strong will be favor doing something on your behalf right abounding towards you see the things that God does on your behalf will abound towards you he's gonna go out and do it and the thing will come to you <laughs> these things all happen in the room of Holy Ghost worship you like that the room of Holy Ghost worship you enter into this room of Holy Ghost worship where this doesn't happen if you're outside the room That's right. right 
your heart isn't perfect towards him and i'm telling you i've talked about this so many times but you know that's part of our message here in fact we're apostolic i know i i i, I tend to not want to use that word because it's been so perverted in my estimation in this day the apostolic and prophetic mm -hmm. yeah we believe in the apostolic and prophetic well but we're the way i'm using the word we're apostolic with this message meaning we're a forefront we're one that is establishing called to establish this message the the literal definition of apostle is one sent to establish a sent one sent to establish it talks about angels that way angels are sent from heaven and they come down with a message so they're brought down to bring that message right do they come down and just tell you any message they want no they come down they, they give you the message that they got from heaven and they speak it in your ear and hopefully you listen to it but we have this message we've, we've received in fact through the ministration of angels we have this message and we are apostolic in this message are you getting this yes. all right so let's go to Acts chapter 18 and what we have in this message is that a more perfect way so when the whole, when when the word says that your heart needs to be perfect towards God pre this message you couldn't be as perfect towards God the Holy Ghost as you can be now and if you think about the message of being the Holy Ghost being the only God in the earth today or only Holy Ghost only right that message itself perfects the way you think it adds on to all of those other things and straightens them out is this making sense did I tell you what to turn thank you Acts chapter 18 let's look at verse 26 and when he began to boldly speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly God who it would be God the Holy Ghost so can you expound the way of God more perfectly Absolutely. Hallelujah. you know you can get saved and that's all fine and good and you can die and go to heaven but then there's more perfect ways of expounding the things of God that you learn as you go along and that's what we have here in an apostolic type message that is taking us to a more perfect way of worshiping God God who God the Holy Ghost are you getting this Three. so they had a way of God more and then look down to verse 19 I mean chapter 19 Acts chapter 19 verse 1 and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth Paul having passed through the upper coasts came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples so what we see here he's coming to the same town where Aquila and Priscilla were trying to get these people right because all they knew was the baptism of John we'll see this and he said to them look at what Paul says to them verse 2 Acts chapter 19 verse 2 and he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe what was Paul's first message to the people that he was trying to bring to a more perfect way what was his message have you received the Holy Ghost his message was about the Holy Ghost now I'm just gonna throw this here just because this will be fun for somebody <coughs> did he say or he should have said according to most people you received the Holy Ghost when you believed don't you know he should have said what know you not that you received the Holy Ghost when you believe is that what he said because there's no basis for this verse of scripture in most people's doctrine when they say that you received the Holy Ghost when you got saved no you received an, an action of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost created a new person on the inside of you when you received Jesus and what Jesus did for you and then he said did you receive the Holy Ghost are you here what is he doing he's expounding a more perfect way to them he said unto them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and they said we've not even heard so much as there was any Holy Ghost I guess the message that they had heard 
didn't take them that far in fact they go on they say unto what then were you baptized he said unto, they said unto him John's baptism what was John's baptism Jap John's baptism was unto repentance and receiving the one that was coming who was Jesus that's as far as they went and Paul's like have you received the Holy Ghost because this is where we're at that was okay at that time when John was around but now it's not okay because we have a more perfect way and when the Holy Ghost came into the earth and is the only God in the earth today then the only more perfect way is Holy Ghost only right. recognizing the fact that Jesus isn't here he's in heaven and it's you in the Holy Ghost are you here and we have that message we have a message of Holy Ghost only and <clears throat> look over at Acts chapter since we're in Acts chapter 24 Acts chapter 24 and verse 14 is this one underlined in your Bible it is. all right which means I've probably been here before <laughs> but this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy so what so worship I the God of my fathers now people would call the way that we're telling you to worship God that it is some kind of heresy or it's some kind of cult or something but it's not we're worshiping God who's the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today we worship him as God in the earth today and some people call it heresy well let me ask you a question those people who don't worship God and those people who call what we're doing heresy are they going to get the blessings from 2nd Chronicles 16 9 of the Lord looking through are, is their heart perfect towards him it can't be because they're not worshiping God in the earth today and he's in the earth with eyeballs looking at you right. say eyeballs, eyeballs. In, the in the earth I think he gets a kick out of this somehow you're offended but he's thinking it's funny <clears throat> so except let me read the rest of this I confess this unto thee that after the way which they call heresy so worship I the God of my fathers believing all things which were written in the law and the prophets which means we're not leaving all of these things undone we're just in a way that's more perfect right so if we took the the verse of uh, second chronicles 16 9 where it says the eyes of the lord are looking for those whose hearts are perfect towards him can there be more perfect and less perfect degrees of perfectly towards him yes and to whatever degree you're more perfect towards him is the degree he will be able to more bless you is this making sense and there's no more perfect way than sitting there going I worship you Holy Ghost your God in the earth today mm -hmm. I mean the angels do this forever holy holy I worship you they're saying holy we and we say Holy Ghost right so we're getting there we're more perfect so if we have more perfect towards him he will be able to give more perfect blessings towards us is this making sense all right we're not against tithing the spoken word word of faith all of these things right <coughs> salvation all, all of these are healing are we the gifts of the Spirit are you kidding me this is a more perfect way right so Jesus talked about don't leave that which is undone he says the tithing that was okay but don't leave this part undone and that's where most of the church is is that they've left this part undone what Holy Ghost in the earth what did Paul go and tell these people he said have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe he was covering the area that they had left undone and as I've said many many times when you begin to worship the Holy Ghost it starts to organize and reorganize and rewire and reboot so to speak your whole system so that you're more perfect towards him and guess what he's gonna do he's gonna do things for you he's gonna get up and go out and do things for you on your behalf did I read that verse of Scripture do you want God doing things for you on your behalf yeah. yes then you got to open up your mouth and go I worship you Holy Ghost and he will go and do something on your behalf isn't this great yeah. 
<clears throat> I'm telling you you may not like it but I carry this message and if you listen I'll be able to impart it to you and you'll be able to go there see because God's new places and God's new reorganization they always come with words and the words have a destination and if you reject these words of Holy Ghost only in the earth and Holy Ghost worship then you can't go where those words will take you right they have a destination does this make sense if I preach on prosperity what's the what's the destination of those words prosperity if I preach on healing what's the destination of those words healing, healing. if I preach on Holy Ghost worship what is the destination of those It'd be the Holy Ghost who's in the earth looking around to do himself strong on your behalf Glory to God. if you want that I suggest that you worship the Holy Ghost <laughs> right worship him more wake up in the morning and say I worship you Holy Ghost while you're getting your coffee you say I worship you Holy Ghost or your tea or whatever I don't know how proper you are right bacon and egg or whatever you're doing eight mile run I don't know <laughs> either way I worship you Holy Ghost and I'm telling you and I'm this is from my own personal experience I like to pray in tongues a lot I have many confessions that I do I have certain things that I'm confessing and believing for that I do them regularly all the time if you go in my in my bedroom it, you'll you'll see you know lists of scriptures I go in there and I say them <laughs> why am I saying them because I walk with God the Holy Ghost by saying words right yes. but then I but I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost and then I'll worship the Holy Ghost for a while usually before that but then while I'm doing that I realize that all of these other things are contained in that and this is just perfect mm -hmm. it's like pure nectar mm -hmm. the pure nectar of God <laughs> and you think about the angels what are they doing they're they're hyped up on the pure nectar of God worshiping him <laughs> eh. right Lord. and I realize because a lot of things let's say I'm confessing prosperity scriptures I'm believing for prosperity I'm reaching out with my faith to try to grab onto something right mm -hmm. but if I worship the Holy Ghost he goes out and gets it he looks at me and goes oh I can see something you could use and he goes out there and does it does he have pleasure in this yes. mm -hmm. <clears throat> let's just let's skip over there let's go over to uh, first Timothy chapter 6 and what verse first Timothy chapter 6 so you get to this place where you'll be preaching these messages I don't want to be a preacher well we'll get there <laughs> first Timothy Timothy said chapter 6 and verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in what the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy who's doing this the living God and if your hearts perfect towards him he's able to get up and go and bring you things that you're going to enjoy and he likes it Amen. we're almost done <clears throat> so this message that we carry and we preach here will take you somewhere you couldn't go it will carry you someplace you couldn't go without the message does this make sense yes. right any scripture that involves God doing something any scripture that involves God doing something in the earth specifically okay <clears throat> will function more perfectly here in this doctrine of I worship you Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost worship and the Holy Ghost only are you here yes. the any scripture that says that God will do something functions more perfectly they expounded the way of God more perfectly your heart is more perfect towards him which enables him to do something for you more say more yeah. more perfectly it was good but it wasn't more perfectly it's more perfected it's better you are believing for something that this is going to be better <laughs> any scripture that involves God will doing something will function more perfectly here in Holy Ghost only is it I know it's making sense to you 
I hope it's making sense to people out there because you've lined things up more perfectly you know who God is the Holy Ghost you know where he is he's in the earth you know what he's doing he's looking about to show himself strong on behalf of someone so all of this is gonna function more perfectly for you <clears throat> are you here Deuteronomy 8 18 well I don't want it to function more perfectly that scares me well you will when you when you finally have it ex happen to you and you experience it the things of God are good Amen. he's a good God That's right. and you want him looking at you mm -hmm. and you want him going hey I'm gonna go do something on your behalf well let me ask you a question if I'm in a room full of people and God does something because I'm worshiping him on my behalf what about the rest of the people that aren't worshiping him he came in the room looked at me yeah. right He's going to show himself strong on my behalf what is that that's called favor favor is him showing his willingness to do something on your behalf that he wouldn't be willing necessarily to do for the other one until they do what he wanted them to is, is this making sense yeah. i know people don't like it that way because god's sovereign he does whatever he darn well pleases well then it, then he's not the god of the bible because this specifically says that if you worship him he will do things for you which means if you don't worship him he won't do it for you in the same way all right Deuteronomy did I read that Deuteronomy 8 we're almost done verse 18 but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God who the Lord my God the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today and I told you all of these scriptures will function more perfectly in Holy Ghost only Holy Ghost worship is this good this is a great message you need a bigger place Jane I gotta run around <laughs> thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth functions more perfectly here now is this good would you prefer the scriptures to function more perfectly or less perfectly for you <laughs> right and people wonder why it's not working for me you know there's a word verse in the scriptures that says having done all to stand and a lot, a lot of people well having done I've done all I've done all I know that yeah have you worshiped the Holy Ghost oh no <laughs> then most likely he's not going to go out and do something on your behalf but when you worship him he'll begin oh when you worship him he will begin doing things on your behalf and bring it to you Hallelujah. well I'm having fun now so God he's gonna give you power to get wealth will this work better with Holy Ghost worship with Holy Ghost only yes it works more perfectly how about Isaiah we're almost done Isaiah chapter 48 well you can answer this now will Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17 work better in our day when we worship the Living God the Holy Ghost yes all these things will work better more perfectly when we worship the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost only Isaiah chapter 48 thank you Woo. Uh, thus says the Lord thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel I am the Lord thy God which teaches thee to profit which leads thee by the way that thou shouldest go how would you like some teaching and leading coming to your way right Absolutely. it functions more perfectly when you worship God it says he's the Lord God he's the Holy One of Israel is the Holy Ghost the Holy One yeah it says <clears throat> that he teaches thee who's the teacher in the church the Holy Ghost teaches thee who's the leader in the church the Holy Ghost leads thee. these all function better and more perfectly when you have Holy Ghost only straight and you worship the Holy Ghost is this any good I hope so <clears throat> He will show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him how does your heart get perfect towards him how is your heart perfectly facing him is when you're worshiping him 
and who's the Lord God that we're worshiping the Holy Ghost he's in the earth his eyes are looking to and fro to show himself strong on behalf of who those whose hearts are perfect towards it those whose people are worshiping him and therefore all of these other verses of Scripture are going to function more much more better for you <laughs> say more better, -er. more better say it's more better with some extra more better -er. extra R all right glory be to God forever <clears throat> so say this after me I worship you Holy Ghost I I am, I am prosperous and you are doing, you are doing things, in earth, things in the earth on my behalf, on my behalf. I worship you Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost that's how it goes so he goes out he looks at you when he sees you worshiping him he'll go begin doing things on your behalf and you'll you'll wonder why you're so blessed other people wonder why you're so blessed Ooh. Well, let me bless you Holy Ghost I thank you for these people I thank you that you are God in the earth today and you've come on them even right now and you're observing them and you're helping them moving on things in their situations in their jobs in their finances in their schooling in their life and great things are coming to pass says the Lord great things for you as you worship me I take an utmost interest in your life and all of your things as well in Jesus name we thank you for it Amen. Holy Ghost, your God.